friends, once again, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Vertzine Netcast. Vertzine is the online magazine of virtualization and cloud computing. We're going to be doing just a little bit of both today, so I think you're going to enjoy this special edition of Vertzine. Now, I say it's a special edition because we're going to take the entire Netcast to do a demo of a very impressive open source project called Ultio. And I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with this. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. First of all, let me remind you that we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on the Vertzine Netcast and all the other tech podcast network programs. There's some excellent programs out there. I'd encourage you to go to techpodcast.com. I'll put it right here on the screen. And you can check out all the tech podcasts and netcasts that are available, both audio and video. And of course, this is a video netcast. We appreciate you checking us out, and we want to provide some really interesting information for you. And I think this today is just going to blow your socks off. You're going to be impressed with this. Let me give you a little background. Most of you know that I am an administrator uh, for Citrix and VMware and Red Hat, <laughs> technically, but uh, specifically looking at Citrix. Uh, I've been a Citrix administrator for, wow, well over 10, probably close to 15 years. Uh, since the early WinFrame days up to the, uh, you know, then of course we had Citrix XP and MetaFrame and all the different generations that it's been through. And of course now it's Citrix ZenApp. And it's a very powerful and impressive suite uh, of applications and, and uh, it gives you the ability to uh, basically have applications served from a server out to a user and of course you have to install a local client uh, the Citrix receiver on the local machine and then you have to administrate the back-end servers and basically allows you to push out an application uh, either streamed uh, in a virtual manner or to uh, simply display it to the local desktop of the user. Now the way we use it where I work at a local hospital is to have the application run on the server but display locally to the user through what's called a published application. So they don't get a full desktop uh, through Citrix. They simply from their local desktop run the application and the application is displayed on their uh, local desktop. Now. Here's where we're headed today with virtualization and cloud computing. There's been a lot of talk about publishing a web desktop or a virtual desktop for the user that is displayed entirely through a web browser. And uh, there are companies that are spending hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on developing these kinds of applications. Well, that's why what I'm about to show you here today as I said, blew my socks off. I was so impressed with this because this is an open source project. And as you know from most open source projects that we've talked about, open source is free, freely available, and is developed by a community that keeps improving and, and working toward uh, a goal of, of making that software as solid as possible. Now, the way this system is delivered to the end user is they have developed a DVD ISO that you can download from their website and then you take that DVD ISO and, and this is what I did uh, created a new virtual machine under VMware attached that DVD to the virtual machine and then allowed it to build or install that uh, new virtual machine as an Ubuntu server. So the Ultio server is actually a Linux server running, uh, created from this DVD. Then they have applications, they have both Linux and Windows applications that you can download and install on a server. So for instance, I had a Windows 2008 server that I built for this demonstration as a virtualized server. Uh, I then took the executable, ran the executable, and part of the setup of the executable asked what is the name, fully qualified domain name, of your Ultio server, which of course was the Linux server that we had created prior. And so I pointed it toward that server, 
finished the installation, and then went back to the web interface, the address that they give you, to type in to your web browser, and there were my applications. I didn't have to do anything special to set them up. It sends them from both the Windows box and the local Ubuntu server instance. So remember, we're talking here as we go through this demo, we're talking about two servers. One is a Windows 2008 server, the other is an Ubuntu Linux server. Both of them are virtualized on our VMware 5.0 um, cluster at work, okay? And then as I did with the earlier demo, the uh, Ericom demo, I VPNed into work and then I'm displaying it locally. So that's how we're doing the demo. I kind of, boy, I really kind of, uh, you know, beat it into everybody's head that I was doing that because I wanted you to understand that if you see any slight lag, it's because of that VPN connection. When I test it on the network, it is lightning fast, both Ericom and Ultio. Okay, so if you want to see the Ericom demo, that's the netcast just prior to this one. But now let's go into our Ultio demo, open source, web-based desktop. The only thing you have to have locally, no special clients, other than you have to install Java, which you may already have installed as part of your normal desktop build, or you can install it prior to launching the window. Now the web browser that I'm using here is Chrome and check out this demo. All right, we're going to take a look here today at Ultio. Let's go to servers. Notice I have two servers here, a Windows server, which is a 2008 server, and a Linux server, which is an Ubuntu Linux box. I can manage both of them here on the web interface. If I switch to maintenance, those servers will not be, will not be available, or I can switch to maintenance or production for the entire farm. Now let's look at our users here. This is one that I created for myself. This user profile is stored in the local to the Ubuntu server uh, MySQL database. Now let me get rid of the LastPass screen up here. And let's go to applications. Notice that all the applications from both the Windows server and the Linux server are uh, available here in this list. Now it went out and detected these applications. I didn't have to set them up. But notice you can look over to the right and you can see whether they're running on Linux or running on Windows, depending on which server they're coming from. If I go to configuration, I can set my database settings, my server settings. Notice here domain integration. I can come in and use the internal MySQL database. I can uh, connect it to a Microsoft Active Directory. I can use LDAP for uh, an open LDAP connection or I can use Novell even still has Novell. That's kind of nice. Now this is my status on my sessions. I can look at current sessions, which of course there weren't any, or I can look at logs. But now check this out, reporting. I can go in here and I can see graphs of all the various information that I might want. Sessions, CPU, RAM usage, and so forth, which is really important for administrators to keep up with. I can also send a news broadcast, so to speak, to my users as they log on. And I can see a summary of all the user groups, what users have what rights to which applications. Go back to the index here, you can see the screen is laid out where I can look at my users, my applications, I've got publication wizards for applications. Now let's go to the user desktop. Now notice the user actually just goes to this website in a regular browser, no local client installed, other than having Java on their system, which of course could be part of their normal build. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And that will bring up when I connect. Well, there's LastPass again. Let me get rid of it. <laughs> when I connect, I'm going to come up with a screen here. Now this screen is set to the Windows 2008 server that I have at work. Remember this is coming through a VPN connection from work. Now it gives me an error down here about the user profile was not loaded correctly. That's okay. I can take care of that. That's just a tweak with group policy for this Windows box. But now all of these applications that are listed here, whether it's in the All Programs listing or on the desktop, all of that is available to the user. This would be the user's interface through their uh, web connection. Now let's bring up Calc. This is LibreOffice. 
3.5, the latest version. Here's Calc. They could use a spreadsheet. Now remember, this is over the web with no local client other than just a plain web browser with Java. Yet, look what it's set up. It's set up as data access. My local drives, my local PC is called Jordy, you know, after the Star uh, Trek Next Generation Engineer. And here are my files on Jordy. So I could go in with these applications and manipulate these files whether it's a spreadsheet or a Word document or whatever, cancel out of this. Now let's say I wanted to print this document. Let's go to File and go down to Print and check this out. My local printer is mapped automatically. I didn't have to set this up. I didn't have to set it up as the administrator. Out of the box it maps the local printer for you in your session from this web desktop. Now calculator boom up instantly look how quick that is now here Firefox web browser this is not coming off the Windows box this is coming off of the Ubuntu server see it's coming from Ubuntu now it's kinda of funny that I'm using a web browser application under a web desktop but what I found interesting about this is a it's an application coming off of the Linux server when I'm really it appears on a Windows desktop through the web but now if I go into the Vertzine website, here's the website, and I even when I was at work, because the VPN connection of course is slowing it down, but when I was at work I actually clicked on the video and watched the video and heard both the video and the sound through the connection. Now here's WordPad, and this WordPad of course is obviously coming off the Windows server, and here are my drives, just like I had in LibreOffice and this time let's go into the D drive this is the terabyte drive that I have on my local PC here at home so I have access to all of that data and same as I had in LibreOffice here is my local printer mapped correctly so I can get out of that now let's get out of this desktop notice the only options I have are log off and lock so I'm going to log off now I've logged off that desktop my session is ended and I'm sitting in a web browser. I'm going to go back to the other screen, the, the uh, administrator interface, go into configuration. Notice the options that I have here. I can set up web interface settings so that I can display the user list or not. So if I only had a small business with maybe five users, maybe I'd want to display the whole list. If I had hundreds of users, well, I could turn that off, which is what I've done. I can go in and set my database settings, my system settings. I have all kinds of control over the system from here. There goes LastPass again. I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> All right, I can check out my events and have it send me email if there is a problem or an issue. And I could go in, of course, and change my administrator password, which, by the way, I'd encourage you to do as soon as you set up the system. Session settings, I can configure all of that users, applications, I can tweak the applications, I can set the MIME types, I have a publication wizard to help me publish you know unique applications. All kinds of things available through this interface. The, the ability to customize it is really really impressive. Server settings, notice I can tweak the memory and various other things. Now let's go into session settings. This is something I really wanted to show you that's really exciting. Look at the desktop type option here. This desktop type allows me, as you noticed before, we had a Windows option. Now let's choose Linux. Okay, we choose it. We save the configuration. Very important to save it. And notice we get this green bar that says successfully saved. Let's go back to the desktop now. Same session we had earlier but we're in terms of the screen, but we're going to click on it. We're going to log in, give it our password. You can see the drop down there where I can display other users. Okay, now we're going to go into the desktop. Now this desktop is coming off the Ubuntu server, and it's a Linux desktop. But what Ultio has done is they've optimized this desktop. They even put their logo down on the start button. <laughs> and it's a much cleaner, simpler desktop. And look, you've got all your applications listed that you have access to but nothing else. 
There's nothing to even indicate this is Linux. And over in the corner, the right-hand corner, you've got a button to log off there, or you can log off over here. Let's launch Calc. Now remember, Calc is actually coming off the Windows box, not the Linux box. But it's all integrated as if it were part of this, this server desktop. It's amazing. All right, let's go in now to Print. And sure enough, even though I'm using the Linux desktop now, but having an application come off of Windows, my local printer is mapped. As a Citrix administrator, this is exciting stuff. This is the kind of thing that you go to training to figure out how to set up, and this is doing it out of the box. All right, we go into our local computer. There's our map drives. And notice Documents on Ultio Manager is actually the documents on my local Windows 7 system. So these are the ones locally coming to me. Obviously, this would be a training issue for your users. You train them, and they're ready to roll. Okay, now let's look at, here on the desktop, the uh, Firefox that we ran under Windows. Now we're running it from the Linux desktop. And this time I'm going to put in the Dr. Bill site. Uh, Dr. Bill, uh, not .com, I'm sorry, drbill.cc. All right, and here is the Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, uh, kind of our, our, our main site here for both Vertzine and uh, Handheld Hack and the other uh, netcasts that I do. But again, I could run the netcast directly from that site. Let's log out here, confirm it, and it would work fine. It's just amazing. So here is my desktop for the user. And if you think about what you're doing here with Ultio, you are actually getting a user desktop published to them with their data anyway okay, the did you see can, can you get a concept of why this is so exciting to me both as a Citrix administrator because for years using Citrix I have had to battle uh, mapping local printers I've had to battle mapping local drives deal with all these things that Ultio is doing right out of the box and providing a web desktop a virtual cloud-based desktop for users. Can you imagine using this in small to medium-sized businesses to provide uh, remote desktops anywhere they go, any web browser, a friend's house, uh, an internet cafe, whatever, they connect in and are able to run their applications, their spreadsheets, their Word documents, in my case using LibreOffice because LibreOffice of course is what I prefer since it's open source but all of these things can be made available to the users through a simple web browser and if they don't have Java installed of course they can go to java.com do the installation bring the website right back up and they're good to go so I just wanted to show this to you I, if you're as excited about it as I am let people know about this netcast. Tell them to tune into Vertzine, V-I-R-T-Z-I-N-E dot com to see this demo and then check out the Ultio open source project. Exciting stuff. We'll see you next time on the next Vertzine. Remember until then to keep your head in the cloud.